All right, hi everyone. Welcome back to another tutorial of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Himanshu, and we are continuing our Lightning Web Components Masterclass. In this tutorial, we are pretty much geared up and ready to set our systems up, right? So, as part of setting up, there are certain things that we need as prerequisites so that we can start writing code, right? So, for Lightning Web Components, there's a small problem. So, if I go to VS Code here and I open my org. I've zoomed this a bit uh, from now onwards so that you are able to read the code a bit bit better and, and easier to read. You don't have, you know, squint your eyes. So if I open the open any Salesforce org, the problem currently is that Salesforce does have the developer console, if you know it, right? That allows you to write Apex classes, Visual Force pages, and even Lightning components. However, with Lightning Web Components, developer console does not really support that. So that's a limitation of the developer console, which opens up right here, right? So you cannot really create any kind of developers console. I mean, any kind of lightning web components, right? So all you have to do is you actually have to use some sort of IDE integrated developer environment, right? Where you can actually write code and publish it. So if I were to say new, you see, I don't have any option to actually create any kind of lightning web components. And a lot of people use the developer console, but now you have to actually move to something called a VS code, visual studio code, or maybe code builder, which is coming from Salesforce, right? But again, code builders it is, is very much similar to VS code that I have opened right here. So you don't have to worry. If you are comfortable with VS code, you can be comfortable with any and everything. All right. So the first and foremost thing, which is a prerequisite, and I would want you guys to set it up right away is installing VS code and then installing the required extensions. So how do you do that? You actually go to your browser, you simply type in visual studio code, and that would open up the primary page, which is code.visualstudio.com. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this link and then you would see different options available for different devices. So if you want to download it for your Windows or your Android or your, I'm mean not, not Android, but Windows or Mac OS, it will automatically show up for other platforms here, right? So you can actually look at all the possible options, see Windows, Mac, and then Ubuntu options, right? So most of you might be on Windows, some of you might be on Mac. So just download the right kind of version. What that will do is that will simply download the VS code software in your uh, setup in your uh, what do you call it in your machine and then you can just go ahead and start using it so if i go to downloads you'll see that i have this particular visual studio code application which is about 582 mbs and this is something that i can just use and launch so what i've done is i've just pinned it to my bar here so i can see vs code available here right so this is basically the vs code and this is your your war zone to actually write and do any kind of coding that you have to do all right, so that's one prerequisite that you need. Once you're done with installing Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio Code is actually helpful for writing any and every kind of code. So it's not just for Salesforce, meaning you can kind of pretty much write any and everything. It could be a Java project, it could be a Python project, it could be some script, it could be a web application, it could be a Salesforce application, right? But for you to for you to be enabled, for you for Visual Studio Code to make sense of writing Salesforce code, you need some extensions or more like plugins and you need a command line interface. This is a CLI, which is the command line interface, right? You need some plugins and you need some extensions. What do you need? You actually first of all need to install Salesforce CLI. How do you do that? Similar to how you installed VS code first, that is your first step. You go and you say Salesforce CLI install. You can just simply type that out. All right, and you can see that you have a Salesforce CLI setup guide here from the developer.salesforce. You also have an article from Salesforce where you can just go to this particular link. And I believe that should let you install or download the Salesforce CLI, right? Again, the same thing, you get two options or you get multiple options, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So because I'm on a, a Mac OS browser right now, it's automatically suggesting me the Mac one. It might suggest you the Windows one. You can go with 86 or the 64 version based on the kind of set laptop that you have. And I just went ahead and installed the Apple Silicon Mac OS, right? Now the thing is here in case of Apple, you have different kind of chips. If you are using the Intel chip processor, you have to go with the second option. If you are using the new ones like the M1, M2, M3, M4, you have to go for the Apple Silicon Mac OS option. 
right what is this this is nothing but a powerful command line interface that simplifies development and or helps you build automation when while working on your salesforce org right so you'll be writing a lot of code you'll be deploying it to your org you'll be retrieving it from there you'll be doing a lot of execution you'll be writing a lot of good code all of that has to be you know streamlined for you so that you work on the main main requirement you work you focus you're, you focus on the main problem you don't focus on the other tits and bits right that's where the cli will help you and this cli is basically tightly integrated with vs code right so this right here is vs code i'm not going to jump into the entire uh, look and feel and how do you use it we will see it as in when we go or else you can actually look at my vs code playlist if you want to just do a kick start on how to use vs code for writing code and deploying and retrieving code all right but a very quick starter you have this icon here which says extensions this is where you'll actually see all the extensions that you have to install i'll simply go ahead and type salesforce and you will see two key extension packs one is the extension pack expanded which is basically an, a bigger version of this particular file. This is 17 files insti inside here, inside this pack, and there are 10 inside this pack. I have installed both of them, and the Salesforce CLI integration is another plugin I have installed so that the VS Code system runs with the Salesforce CLI features. Okay, a very simple feature I would like to show you is if I do command shift P on my laptop, you see I can create a lightning web component. These SFDX commands are available only because I have the CLI installed and the plugin set up here. Make sense? Alright, so this is what the plugin is required for and this is what helps you or enables you to actually write code on the builder, on the ID environment, on VS code and actually push it to the org that you're working in, which is basically the Salesforce org. Okay, so in this sequence, you have to actually follow Visual Studio code first, Salesforce CLI second, and then the required extensions. The required extensions are these three. And then you can actually install a bit more if you want, which are not necess comp compulsory, but they are good to, you know, have. So for example, you can actually go for GitHub Copilot, you can install Git Lens if you have a repository, you have Prettier, which is basically formatting tool for code so that you can read the code a bit properly. Some options are available here. Again, I have explained this in a, another tutorial. So if I were to go to Safari, let's go to YouTube and let's try to look at my channel, your videos, and I'm going to go ahead and go to playlists. And here, if you see the playlist, you should see a playlist for visuals i mean vs code let me just find it out this one right here right so if i were to open this playlist right here you'll see that this exactly is for understanding and using vs code this is three years ago but it is pretty much still relevant just a bit of things have changed nothing major has changed okay so you can just follow this playlist and you can set yourself up all right Great. So that's your Visual Studio Code setup. Just put a comment that, you know, yeah, I have successfully set up Visual Studio Code so that I know. And in case you have any problems, I'll, I'll try to solve it for you. All right. Great. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.